run it up, then run it back. Yeah. Run it up, then run it back. Run it up, run it back. Happy <laughs> morning. Up, what is today? Tuesday? How is it only Tuesday? That is weird. This is Run It Back on FanDuel TV in our special time this week. Lou Will. Miller Parsons, <laughs> Michelle Beadle, Sham Sharania coming to us from Chicago. You guys are wearing all black again. We need to really yeah. coordinate this. And it's actually better. cold in here today. It is nice. I wore and cold a nice here. pastel or gray today because I'm not nice seeping. Pastel? Hey, you know, I never usually wear, like, I love baby blue, but I can't wear it because I sweat so much. And that was a little bit about Chandler to start the show off. <laughs> so we're going to get things started with some basketball. No games, of course. That doesn't mean there's not stuff to talk about with our scoops of the day. Uh, Mike Conley with an extension yesterday, Shams. Talk to me about that. Michelle, two years, $22 million extension for Mike Conley Jr. That puts him under contract through the 2025 2026 season. He's making $24 million Ooh. just this season. So he's going to get $22 million over the next two years. He's 36 years old, and for them, uh, the Timberwolves, they acquired Mike Conley at the trade deadline last year for D'Angelo Russell, and I've heard words like God sent, um, steady hand. God sent. He, he's been essentially a guy that, that has allowed Anthony Edwards, Carl Anthony Towns, Jalen McDaniels, uh, Jane McDaniels, and Rudy Gobert to play their roles. He played with Rudy Gobert in Utah, and I think that cohesiveness uh, his impact, his leadership, that's all played a part in why Minnesota now is looking up, and they're one of the best teams in the league, competing for the number one seed in the Western Conference. And Mike Conley Jr., he's been discussing an extension with the Timberwolves for the last few weeks. He wanted to be in mini. Uh, that's where he, him and his family are comfortable. And now looking forward, uh, the Timberwolves have Anthony Edwards, Carl Anthony Towns, Rudy Gobert, Jaden McDaniels, and now Mike Conley Jr. all locked in for the next several seasons. And they're going to be a second apron team. This is a team that's going to be heavy into the luxury tax, paying the luxury tax for the first time in almost 20 years. So for the Timberwolves, this is their team. We'll see how they do in the playoffs. But getting Mike Conley Jr. locked in, who Chandler is very familiar with, that was very, very important for Tim, Tim Connolly and the Timberwolves. Yeah, to have someone like that on a team like this that has the you know, best record in the West, second best in the league, how, how vital is this? It's super valuable, and I, I love him. He's, he's probably the best teammate I've ever had. The dude couldn't oh. be nicer. He works hard. He's so professional. Uh, I'm extremely happy for him, and this just shows you that character does matter still. When you look at a guy like him, he, he's never going to ruffle any feathers. He's never going to be late. He's going to come there. He's going to work hard. He's going to still play well, too. The guy's still averaging you know, 10, 11 points, five, six assists. He's solid. He's healthy. He's proved that he can still compete and still be a starting point guard in this league. So when you have a team like this that's trying to contend and, and trying to continue to grow and develop chemistry, there's not a better guy to lock up than Mike Conley. So I'm extremely happy uh, for him. And this is someone that you want in that locker room with Anthony Edwards' development, with Carl Anthony Towns and Rudy Gobert, this, this nucleus going forward. There's not a better leader, not a better guy than Mike Conley. So extremely happy for him. Right, he just he brings stability to the table. Yeah. You know, you always need a guy in the locker room that's going to be even killed because you're going to have highs and lows throughout the course of a season. So having Mike Conley and having him there, especially when you have such a young nucleus of guys and have an older veteran guy that can still play, by the way, and not just have um, a, a presence in the locker room, he's going he's gonna to give them that. So I think this is a, a great extension for the Minnesota Timberwolves moving forward. And, you know, if I'm Chris Finch, I'm like... Hell yeah. Like this guy, this, this is another good. coach out there. This makes his job even easier because Mike Conley is that, that floor leader, that general. He's not the most vocal guy. He's not, the, he's not loud, but he gets his point across. Everybody likes him. He's, he's the greatest guy ever. Like I've never heard one That's bad great. thing about him. So, again, super happy for him. He's 36 years old, just getting a two-year Right? That's nice. And he's already made so much bread. Mike, you are rich, my friend. <laughs> Keep going. He's winning. I yeah. love that. By the way, is it weird that the Wolves are where they are, and yet the other three teams in the West, Clippers, Nuggets, um, Suns, all have better odds to win? This feels weird now. It's like, just, I think it's a talent thing, right? You look at, you look at, yeah, you look at Denver, proven champions. You look okay. at Clippers, loaded, and then you look at the Suns, D. Book, Bill, and, and Kevin Durant. The star power is, is one of the things that we always talk about on this show, and, and all three of those teams have it. They have experience. They have older guys in Minnesota 
locking in Mike Conley, that puts them in that conversation. But, you know, come postseason, they're going to have to prove it. Yeah, it's, there's like a trust factor there. It's like That's Cleveland fair. in the East for me. Like, I love their team. I love their talent. I love their coach. But, like, I got to see him do it in the postseason. Yeah. I'd love to see Minnesota. Hey, same with OKC. They are on the rise. They have talent. They're so much fun to watch. I need to see them knock off a Clippers. I need to right. see them knock off a Phoenix Suns with all this explosive offense and all that experience. So, Because as much as we like them, if you put it on paper right now, the Minnesota Timberwolves versus the Los Angeles Clippers in a seven-game series. Clippers in five or six. Everybody's going to feel like it's going to be Clippers. So for them to be yep. taken serious, for them to have the season that they're having, and for that to translate, they got to they gotta knock off some of these big-time teams in the playoffs. All right, Shams, we got the Nets um, with the news yesterday, of course, uh, firing Jacques Vaughn. Kevin Ollie will be the interim yep. coach now for the rest of the season. Any chance that's a, a, a long-term thing or no? Kevin Ali could be part of the process, but the Nets are going to have a full-blown coaching search in the summer. Sean Marks is now on his, will be on his fifth coach Ooh. in eight plus years as GM uh, is running that organization in Brooklyn. That's a lot of head coaches. But look at Kevin Ali, 13-year NBA career. He's been known as a leader. He was a championship coach at the University of Connecticut. Uh, you know, about a decade ago, winning a title, NCAA title there. He was a finalist for the Pistons job last year that went to Monty Williams. So Kevin Ali has proven over the course of his playing career as well as his coaching career that he can be a guy that's looked at as a leader of men, a good X's and O's coach. Now he's going to have an opportunity for the second half of the season uh, to really bring accountability and structure to Brooklyn. We talked about a lot of the issues that, that they've had so far this year, guys that have come out vocally behind the scenes. So what happens to several of these players' roles? Cam Thomas, Ben Simmons, second half of the year. Uh, but Mikhail Bridges, that's the one cornerstone that they look at in Brooklyn. So how do you surround him with the right pieces? You're familiar with uh, Kevin Ollie, right? Absolutely. You guys, you guys played together? What, what kind of leadership yep. is he bringing? So when we talk about a Mike Conley type of guy that brings stability and brings accountability, Kevin Ali is the consummate of that. Huh. Um, I, was, I was blessed to have him coming in the, in the NBA as a young 17-year-old kid and having a veteran like this on, on countless amount of occasions after practice. Young fella, let's go get some extra shots. Young fella, let's get some sprints in. Let's play some one-on-one. Let's work on this. Let's work on that. He did that for me my first two years, um, being in, even to the point he would go in the family room, grab my friends, grab my brother, like, yo, come on, we going to chapel. Young fella going <laughs> wow. to chapel. He's that type of person. And when you talk about communication, somebody that's going to be very vocal in what he wants, what he expects from you, Kevin Ali is going to bring that to the table. So for the interim, I think this is a great decision. Hopefully it works out and he sticks around. Yeah, I like this hire. They don't need like a, a Doc Rivers type. They need someone like this that's been in the college game with the UConn Championship. I think he was at overtime elite as well. So he yep. knows how to develop guys he knows how to rebuild he knows and, and that's looking like that's where Brooklyn is heading towards so Man. I don't know him very well but I've heard nothing but great things not Lou said that I, I'm great not things um, we're gonna take a, a look around the league this will be fun so uh, while in Indy for all-star weekend LeBron was asked about how much he's got left in the tank and how he wants to finish his career here he is I have not mapped out how many seasons I have left. Um, I know it's not that many. Um, I also don't know if I will, I was asked this question a couple of days ago, will you kind of take the farewell tour or will you kind of just Tim Duncan it? I'm 50-50. You're taking a tour. <laughs> I don't think he knows what 50-50 means uh, because there's, Zero chance in hell. He's not taking a farewell tour. Am I wrong or am I wrong? You're not wrong. I mean, he's, what? Which he's taking a tour. He's taking a tour. And by the way, he, he might should. take two. He, yeah, he he should. Listen, he's arguably the greatest player of all time. I think when you're in the league that long, you develop a lot of relationships that he might never see these people again in mm. his life. So for him, I think he's going to do it because he wants it. His people, his family, his team, they all want it. And he again, he deserves it. But the, on the other side, the fans, the ushers, the the other locker room attendants, guys like that on the opposing room, they have a relationship too with him where like it means something to him. And again, they're never going to see him again. So there's no way he's going to Tim Duncan it. That's just it's not zero. who he is. Yeah. And I guarantee you it's already mapped out too. You know, this guy, <laughs> he's, a, he's a savant. He knows every, he's playing chess, not checkers. Why like does it. he even say it though? Like, you know you're going to have a farewell tour. You know you are. 
Yeah, it's going to be a parade I think he, and a party. He wants, he wants us to tell him to, to, to do it, that you earned it, you deserve I it. I don't, which, I don't know. <clears throat> because, listen, you, you never know when it's going to end. And I, I learned that from Kobe Bryant, right? When, yeah. In Kobe's last season when I was with him, his whole thing was he was dead set on competing at a high level. That's how he started the season. That's how he was training. That's how he was getting ready. Mm. Ten games in, body starts breaking down. The whole, the, the completely different aspect of the season changed and how well we were going as a team. It was completely different. We went from a team that was developing young talent and Julius Randle, D'Angelo Russell and those guys to, hey, this year is about Kobe. This is a farewell tour. Let's just go out and play as best we can and this is about him. And so, Bron, I think he's still in the mindset of thinking, I don't know when it's going to be over. You know, I'm going to compete at a high level as long as I can. And once that day comes, I'll cross that bridge when I get there. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of buying this take from him because I don't think he really knows when he's going to be well, done. And at the rate he's playing, too, it's impossible to predict, right? If he keeps doing this again next year, like we're talking about a two or three year deal. Yeah. Like, like, right. like he's, he is still going. He's still a top 10, top 15 player in the NBA yeah. at this age. So like. Uh, how how could he know how much longer he he has? You know what I mean? Like us watching, we have no clue. I agree with that. I don't know that he knows when he's calling. I just know he doesn't know when, but yeah. he's definitely gonna be celebrated. One hundred percent. When it comes down so. to it, there will. I don't care if it's twenty twenty nine. There's gonna be a farewell. One hundred percent. Every single with season. gifts and parades. Let me add. Everything. It's gonna be exhausting. Um, what city will have the hardest time? This is this is easy for me. Is I don't, it? I don't know about Chandler, but it's Orlando. You remember he took that big crap on Orlando and said if, if they traded, if they, no, he ever got traded to it. Orlando, he would get, him. he would we retire. We don't care about that it. That was a crazy <laughs> shot, the buzzer beater. Yeah. So I, I think I think Orlando is the team that's least excited about LeBron retiring. Okay. Yeah, you know what's interesting? I, like, who's his like rival? He does, I mean, he's moved around a little bit. Like, he doesn't really have like a, a rival to me. Where I mean, it's Conrad's like, in my ear saying Boston. Like Boston, maybe yeah. just because like, the 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 heated battles with Miami and with Cleveland. But like, I don't really know a rival. I know it's gonna be tough for Cleveland. It's gonna be tough for Miami just to kind of finally say goodbye and the Lakers, I guess. Oh, but, see, I have a theory on the Cleveland. Hold on, hold on. But also, thought. I'm. I think he already owns part Let's of. Yeah, well, anyways. no, because here's the deal. He was also talking about where he wants to be basically when he walks away from the game, which I thought was an interesting thing to ask in the first place. So here he is first, and then I'll tell you. But I am a Laker, and uh, I am I'm happy and been very happy being a Laker the last six years, and, uh, and hopefully it stays that way. Um, but I don't, have the, I don't have the answer to how long it is or – you know, which uniform I'll be in. Hopefully it is with the Lakers. It's a great organization and so many greats, but but we'll see. I don't know how it's going to end, but it's coming. Uh, see, uh, I'm rolling. I I'm think not. I think Kevin calf. Durant is like a, a, a Thunder. I think Mike Conley is a Grizzly. I think LeBron James is a Cleveland Cavalier. I think he signs I think like it's a where thing. you start and where, like, yeah, like, do you sign the one-day thing or yep. whatever? For him, it would probably be one season. I think he definitely gets, <laughs> whole I, I think he's a Cleveland Cavalier at the end of the day. That's what that's I mean. How I, that's exactly. How I, that's, that's, I think it's where you're, I think it's where it starts, especially where you kind of create your foundation as a player. And to me, obviously, that is the Cleveland Cavalier. I think it's on the board. I think he's going to own the team. He always talks about moving a team to Vegas and doing all this. I think he's going to have pieces of Cleveland Cavaliers and kind of buy the team that he grew up in. Oh, really? See, I thought he was intent on the whole Vegas thing. Maybe Vegas, but I can also see him owning the Cleveland Cavaliers. Own it all. You never well, told us your thing. That's what I think. I think he signs a, a whatever day, 10 day, one year, whatever it is with the Cleveland one Cavaliers. One year max and he is retires. his farewell tour. Yeah, I really think he, I don't think he retires as a, as a Laker. No, he's not a Laker. He's not, no, he's not a Laker. not a Laker. Maybe he, <laughs> Kobe's maybe he a Laker. LeBron's one day with the Laker. Miami Heat. That could do that. And then gets waved. <laughs> And then you know, Cleveland Cavalier next day. Twice. Also, are we just off the idea of him going wherever Bronny goes? Well, from what I read yesterday, Bronny's nowhere near ready for but the But couldn't NBA. that be where he retires? Like in like a that's, Portland Trailblazer when, when Bronny's no, drafted there? That's weird. That would be weird. Like I get loving your kid, but you, that's a 20-year career. But no. he's going. He's going wherever he he's, goes. He's too far in the he game to turn go. around. He's going to wait around until Bronny But plays. what if he's not good enough? I think somebody He's gonna wants to be still take a flyer enough. if LeBron is playing like this. <sighs> All right, we got. And how does that work? What if a team? Exactly what if a team like, signs Bronny to a ten day or a two way or a, you know what I mean? Like does then, does LeBron still go to that team? No. It's got to be a full guaranteed contract. Unfortunately, you and I know, Bronny James is gonna sign a guaranteed deal if that team has an opportunity to sign LeBron's what? Oh, I. By the way, I would do it too. This is where the this is where the Austin Rivers take. 
w which I agree with, makes sense. I yep. want Bronny to be recognized for anything that he's earned and that's deserved. I don't want him to have anything that's hedged on No, LeBron it's a bummer. James. I, yeah, I would love for him to just earn whatever it is coming his way so people can respect Think him as his own you're man. you're the Thunder, like the Minnesota Timberwolves, and you can go grab Bronny with like the 29th pick and get LeBron next oh year. Oh my God, this sounds like a nightmare. But you know what I mean? Like you get LeBron on that on the Thunder right now? Something like it's ridiculous. No, we're not doing that. All right, bromance time. No, because they, they have a good thing going. That just ruins everything. Um, there was a heartwarming thing from the entire All-Star Weekend. I, I think, for my money, it's the bromance, of course, <laughs> between Luka and Jokic. They just seem to be ecstatic to be around each other, not everything else or in the game itself. But look at them. Hmm. Have you ever seen anything so lovely? I feel like this yeah. is a very Euro related. When they when you move over there from there, it's it's lonely and it's They're tough. So, so when you <laughs> see familiar faces and you spend so much time like these guys do in the off season, the summers in Europe, I love this. I think it's great. I mean, look, <laughs> look at them. There's two man weaving it. Just Listen, take. this is genuine, Chandler. Yeah, no, for sure. I, sp I spent three months in a bubble with both of these guys, <laughs> and they were together every single Aww. day. This is a genuine relationship, genuine friendship from these two guys. They they really have a bunch of love for each other. I love it so much because it just they just seem to be sort of like we're on islands together, and when we see look, <laughs> look, they're so happy. Here comes Jokic. Hi, best friend. <laughs> It's just, it's he, he just knew it was him. <laughs> well, do you, uh, was there ever anyone that made you that happy when you would see them in the league? Uh, <laughs> no. It was, the, it was DeMar DeRozan for me. Oh, okay, great. De DeMar is a, is a really cool guy. Uh, lovely. <laughs> this is hilarious. <laughs> I mean. Um, Greg got to be around, but anytime I, I saw I, I saw Debo, we had a we had a great time. Complete I, side note: Swiss Beats had to hate this, right? Swiss Beats, hey, listen, I it's wouldn't. the entertainment business. It's all good. No, um, I didn't really. Ham was a little low, but you know what? I had a high school teammate nicolate this that was that ended up going to the draft. Before we get distracted me, he, so fast. Yeah, I know. I'm like, <laughs> eighty well, all over this place. <laughs> and he played college in Florida with me, but then he left early, and by the time I got to the NBA, he was in Europe Dull. already. So like that would have been like my guy. It was like my childhood friend. That was like my boy that I would have love to play with um besides that no i mean oh what could have really. been yeah your bromance was stolen from you joe keem noah was my guy I got like, him on like a oh, sticky that's my guy two <laughs> ten days in memphis we actually <laughs> lived with me that was awesome he's fun yeah some of the best quote one of the best quotes of all i technically time. live with him as well we we did the bubble together and he's the best he was quite the tenant he's oh <laughs> him in the bubble right. must be a thing uh, he was Good quite Lord. he was, he is quite the, the guy absolute if he hated cleveland this what complete, did he think of the bubble? He was, he was really entertaining. I, I'll be honest. He was there really was a month in Memphis <laughs> where Joe Keem signed a, a, a two 10 days in Memphis. I was obviously on the Grizzlies, but not playing, so not really. Obviously. And then Johnny Manziel signed with the XFL team in Memphis, and we all lived together oh, awful. <laughs> in Memphis, us three. It was a riot. How is this not a reality show? Yeah, it was a riot. Like a documentary. It was, it was awesome, but Joe Keem, is, he's my guy. Um, Jokic was asked about Luka during his presser. Here he is. Yeah, Luca is terrible. <laughs> Luca is really bad for this game. He's worse than me, 100%. It's like they, they're just very honestly like, eh, whatever. I kind of love them. I love both of them. No, I love it too. And like Lou said, it's organic. It's real. It's he's try, he's like tampering, but not really tampering. Obviously, this would be this would be an insane. Dude. Oh, if you could have him on <laughs> one team. Make they'd it happen. suck though. They'd take all the money. They would take they all the money. Any, they, they would, would be have limited with defense. Them. They'd have to. <laughs> they'd have to find seven guys on the minimum deal that all Fine. play defense and shoot threes. Which, by the way, is kind of what the NBA Fine. is now. We'll make that happen. Yeah. That's not impossible. All right, we're taking a quick break. When we come back, the champ is back. Two-time slam dunk Ooh, champion. That back new whip. Long, back on the show. Is that a new whip you're doing the interview <laughs> from? <laughs> <laughs> Run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back, run it up. Get on my level, get on my level. Matt McClung, phase the dunk contest. I'm too flat. Get upstairs. Get on my level. That's just fun to watch. He is back, fresh off of his defense of his championship slam dunk. There he is, yeah. coming to us from a, a car. I like this. I like this for you, Mac. I don't know what's going on here. Uh, congrats, by the way. What was the celebration like for you in Indy? It was great. All my um, all my friends and family were there, so just kind of enjoying it with them and, and really just taking it all in. 
Mac, out of last year's performance, obviously that was one for the ages, but this dunk contest versus last dunk contest, how, how would you compare them? Which one were you most proud of? Um, they're both, you know, I, I was really, you know, grateful for both, but I think definitely the first one, my, I, I had more in the tank on the second one. I just, you know, I just, it didn't go as well for me, but you know, I'm glad about the outcome, but I definitely, I definitely think I had a better performance in my mind. All right, Mac, let's be honest. Jalen Brown wasn't supposed to be in that fight. <laughs> <with you. laughs> what's your, what's your opinion on that? Did you, did you think any of the other guys were, were more deserving or what was, what was your experience? Yeah, I mean, I think Jacob Toppin, you know, has some incredible dunks, and I and I heard he had a crazy dunk for the last dunk. But it's hard for me to like, you know, make opinion about someone else's opinion. Like I can't, you know, judge for the other guys. And you know, uh, yeah, no, it was it was tough. I, I definitely thought he um, was great, and I thought, you know, Jalen Brown wasn't as, you know, I know people are giving him our time, but I thought he had some good dunks too. Which one? <laughs> wow I mean the, th the the 360 windmill like it's not as easy as he made it look I mean there's a lot of things I think uh I think he, he definitely got some flack for the kites in that one but um I don't know man Duncan and being on that stage is not easy so I wouldn't I wouldn't give flack to anybody he, ste he stepped up and did that, which was big That's for him right. in our game. So. Thank you. Yeah, sticking um, with him, yeah, Mac, you. did you love that there was an all-star that was competing with you? Like, did that put any more pressure on you, or do you think that was great for the dunk contest? Yeah, it definitely is good. I mean, we want the all-stars to be in it and people who want to be in it, so I thought that was really cool of him. Definitely. Um, and your first dunk, the self alley oop, you call it the, the whoop whoop? <laughs> um, that was incredible. And, and it only got the score of a 48 from the judges, who, by the way, I thought the judges were pretty horrendous. They, um, were you surprised? No, no, not a 50 on this? That dunk was amazing. Because this is insane. Yeah. Incredible, bro. Look at this. Yeah, so, I mean, I was, I was, I usually put my arms out a lot farther on it, but, um, so I didn't, I didn't, you know, if it didn't get a 50, I understood, but. No, it's it's probably the hardest dunk I had to do all night. So I was I was I definitely was surprised it got a, a forty seven or forty eight, whatever it got. I was a little stressed for you right here, Matt, because the, the judges were getting crushed, rightfully so. It's almost like they didn't know that you know doing it on the second attempt is not to be taking points off. Um, and then I thought, if Mac doesn't advance because the judges suck, I think we're oh, all gonna riot. Like it's gonna be a problem. Oh yeah. That being said, when you practice these dunks, for example, a guy like Shaq. There aren't a ton of stand-ins walking around Earth that look like Shaq. How do you practice that dunk? Yeah, so I just had a bunch of my friends come, and um, they would stand on boxes, stand on chairs, just trying to get that <laughs> Shaq height. Um, yeah, but no, we would just get a measuring tape and try to figure it all out. But I'm, I'm glad it worked out. That's awesome. That was crazy. No push-off, no nothing. Nothing. Mm -mm. Wow. Mac, Jaime Jaquez also used Shaq as a prop, but when you saw him, did you did you consider like changing things up, or you knew when he used Shaq the way he did it, like my dunk is gonna be better than that? <laughs> so it's tough because I didn't do two of the dunks I was supposed to do, and one of them was involved Shaq, but a little something different, and I don't know. Maybe I'll I'll just keep that to myself so I can maybe if I do it again I can use it, but. No, there's a lot of off the off the top, just random randomness in that dunk contest for me. Yeah, Mac, that dunk over Shaq obviously got you 50s and you won the dunk contest. But when, like, when did you when did you ask Shaq? Like, can you do this? Did oh. you rehearse with him at all? Like, how did that kind of develop? Yeah, so I, I got a decent relationship with Shaq. He's he's been very supportive of me since even high school, just checking in with me. I texted him like, hey, would you know, would you do that with me? And he was like, yeah, but I didn't tell him about the jersey till in front of everybody. I was like, you know, I'm just going to wait and it'll be hard to know, say no in front of everybody. But he was really cool. And uh, he said, I better not miss it if, if he puts on the Gate City jersey. So I was like, all right, I won't miss it. <laughs> Mac, I know you said that you had a couple dunks still in your back pocket. So are those going to roll over to next year or are you going to unveil them on uh, Instagram or something? <laughs> We'll see, man. I, I don't know. I, you know, I probably two days out from it. I'm just gonna keep thinking and and see if it's right, and and we'll go from there. Fine. We're, like, we're writing it down. We're keeping notes. Yeah. Talk Matt, to when you look at next year's dunk contest, obviously a lot has to do with what, where your future's at, where you're playing. But do you do you right now, two days out, do you feel like you want to do the dunk contest again? How do you view the dunk contest after two years of doing it and winning it? Yeah, I really don't know. I really don't know what I even you know, my energy towards it would be. And uh, it just had to be something I think about. It's not something I would say I'm not doing, 
it's not something I would sign up for right now. So I would just just think on it really, really deeply and try to figure out if my heart's in the right place for it. And if you know, it takes a lot out of your body. It's not something that's easy to do. So it's a, it's a long preparation and 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 you know dedication. If you decided to do it again and and it felt right and it felt good, uh, considering your opponents, who would, who would be your your dream team of guys you would like to compete against? Yeah, I mean, it's great to have the stars out there. I, I don't know. I, I want people to do it who really want to do it, though. You know what I mean? Because it's right. like like we were saying, it's the, it's the craft. It's a lot of preparation. It's not easy. Um, it can be embarrassing, you know. So just someone who really wants to. And I think some of these stars um, that are super athletic should do it, and, and it could be nothing but good for them. Uh, no offense to us, but we figured we'd bring someone in who knows a lot about Dunk. So uh, Vince Carter was there Yo! in Indy. Vince, what did you think? What did you see? I was impressed, man. I, I mean, look, here, I, 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 what Matt just said, man, just gives me chills because I've been saying it. It's, it's, you want the stars and the people who are, uh, who are able to do it, to do it, to get in there, and which I think will make a great competition, and I think that's what we're missing. But forcing hmm. these guys to do it, you won't get – the, the what you know what you really want and I, I love the fact that those guys you know obviously Mac is defended but like Jalen Brown and Jaime and 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 top and getting in it but you know because they want to and you're gonna get their best effort but it's time to you know for these superstars to just come on out there and put on the show they're very capable of it you know bump the brand I think if you put a great show on mm -hmm. your brand will be safe regardless if you win or lose you you push the envelope you you know everybody's gonna enjoy the competition Aaron Gordon who, who didn't win, we're still like, hey, his brand was okay. It, it didn't take a hit. No, it didn't. Mac, how, many, how, how much inspiration, how much motivation, how many ideas do you get from someone like Vince or some of the past uh, dunk contest participants? Yeah, I think with a guy like Vince, it was like you kind of learn from his swag with it. Like he just came in there so like confident and, that, and it played to the fans. Like it's just – it's it's really a lot. Like you have to really think really deeply, and it just kind of be your aura and your determination for it. And I think I got that from Vince, just like his swag coming into the arena. Like I'm here, you know. I got. Yeah, I wanted to be oh. in it. You know, I, I felt like this was an opportunity. I wanted to be in it. I, obviously, I, I, you know, the league asked, but I wanted to be a part of it. And when once you get there, like I said, man, you have to you have to be confident. And I prepared for it. Like I took it seriously. And, and you know, it wasn't just oh, I'm here. I'm gonna just have fun and just go about it. Now, I approached it, you know, like a game day, and I was just ready to go, and I think that's why I was able to put on a great show like Mac has done. By the way, Vince, can you judge next year, please? Thank you. Because that was... See, no, 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 because see, here's my thing. Uh, <laughs> I, I, was on, I was actually on True TV <laughs> doing, doing the, um, the contest, so I, I just more so gave my opinions on it. And, you know, since we're here, since Mac, you're here, I want to say to him, uh, that I was I was impressed about it, it, it's a lot of pressure obviously defending and you know the, however you viewed the competition however fans viewed the competition whatever it is you still have to go out there and do your job and the one thing I was impressed with Mac was he did what needed to be done in each situation and what I what I mean by that is I think the last dunk he could have pushed the envelope and I I've seen video because I've I've seen you before I've seen video and I know. <laughs> With that dunk, there's other things that you can do with it that I've seen you do, like dunk it from, from behind. I know that. But he did the right dunk. It was wowing, but it was safe for him. And yeah. he got the job done, which I thought he thought things through a little bit, and I was impressed with that. So I got to ask both of you while I got you here. Prime Vince Carter. Oh, man. Prime Mac McClung. Who are we taking <laughs> in the dunk contest? Stop it. Don't, don't, it's not close, man. It's not even close. Vince, Come on. Vince, that's Vince all day, man. Don't, don't, even, man, don't even do that to me. <laughs> hey, man, you don't have to answer that. Mac. But, no, it's, it like, I, but I would love the competition. Uh, you know, that's what, that's what it's all about. I know the NBA years ago tried to get and you know, put a lot of money up for, for the best to do it. And, you know, that would be... You know, Prime Vince would want all the smoke with everybody because, like, it just, it's just going to bring the best out of me. And, Mac, would you have to prepare differently knowing you're going against the, oh, the, the GOAT dunker, Vince Carter? I might have to start two years in advance just thinking <laughs> and, and trying to figure it all out. Uh, you didn't just dunk, by the way. There was the Rising Stars game, which was fun. Did you, did you enjoy that? What was a, a memory that you took out of that game? Yeah, I mean, it was good. We won. I know it was an exhibition game it's the rising stars but um 
I don't know. I, I can't get on the floor and not compete. That's just that's just me. Um, so just to have the G League guys win, I mean, that, that, that meant something to me. And, you know, I thought, you know, I played well and the, my teammates played well, so it was a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. No, you guys weren't playing, which was it was actually quite fun to watch. Um, what's what's going on basketball future wise? Like, do you have plans? Mm -hmm. You have goals. Like, where are you right now? I know you're in Osceola. What happens next? Right. I think for me, it's just to keep applying pressure. I feel like my whole life, that's that's what I've done. To apply pressure, keep showing, taking any excuses away. That's that's what I try to do every year. And um, if I'm in Osceola, then I'm going to try to win a championship with Osceola. That's that's really it. But um, it's all God's timing, and I'm, I'm going to keep applying pressure. I'm not going to quit. Love that, Mac. And after watching the Rising Stars game, man, you belong in the NBA. You're not just a dunker, man. You're a hooper, so keep working hard because we want to see you in the NBA. And we damn sure hey. want to see you back again for the three-peat. Damn right. Hey, I want to say something to that, Mac. You know, like for me, the dunk contest opened, opened the door and gave me the opportunity. And I like what you're saying. It's like if, wherever I am right now, I'm going to do my best and continue to take advantage of this opportunity. You're in the dunk contest. You're getting to show your skill you know, obviously in your athleticism. But yes, in the Rising Stars, you guys really came out and played hard. That's how you open doors and that's how you get that opportunity because there's some team moving forward that's going to need guys. And that was a platform where everybody got to see your skills. So uh, I think keep, keep taking advantage of these opportunities. Matt, I appreciate it, guys. It's been a pleasure, man. We appreciate the time. Congrats again. Hope to see you in San Francisco next All-Star Weekend. Vince? Don't go anywhere. You're sticking around. We'll have more Run It Back after this. Run it all. Run it back. Yeah, yeah. Run it all. Run it back. The in-game dunks are better than the ones we see during All-Star Weekend. They never What's going get old. on, America? All right, hey, Vince Carter's still here. <laughs> real quick. <laughs> what? Hey, guys, real quick. I want to kind of touch on that uh, that judging thing. So, uh, you know, I know you guys talked about the judging, and mm -hmm. some say it sucked. I, my, here's my thing on, on judging, and you will probably see some of the same. There's only one or two dunks that I did not agree with. Uh, you know, so when you when, you know, a dunking you as a judge – more so than fans, it's the wow factor in, yeah. in the moment, right? So when you're missing a dunk, like if you go up there and dunk, because I know Mac had a, a one attempt where he, I think he jumped, he was trying to jump on somebody and he didn't try to attempt the dunk. Right. And then he goes back and he completes it. Then he had the one where I thought he, oh, I thought he was going to hurt himself when he hit the front of the rim and, and, and fell down. <laughs> the wow factor is gone. So, uh, I think that, that that was sick, though. I mean, this but is I, I just think the wow factor is gone sometimes when you've already seen the dunk. You know, you know what I'm saying? So it's I, just yeah. like it's hard to get right. Here. Well, I think that's the one I thought. He, I think he hit the front of the rim first on that that uh, that windmill. But it's hard to kind of give you a ten when I already know what is what's coming. Okay, now I just want to see you complete it. Now, but but, but VC, <clears throat> go ahead. It's it's some of those dunks that we saw that got higher one, scores. Ninety percent of the NBA players can do them. So Correct. when we talk about when we talk about wow factor, yeah. I understand what you're saying, but I still was on the edge of my seat yeah. just looking at them. And his second Absolutely. chance was still better than their first chance to me. Correct, and that's why I say you're talking about still getting a ten. I don't think it still gets a ten. Yeah. I'm not saying right. it should get a seven or eight either. Now, if you're now if we're talking about if, if you mm -hmm. complete the dunk on the second try, I give you a nine. It's not a ten because I I do know what's happening. You know what I'm saying? I know what's happening. I'm, I'm walking through it with you now. I want you to make it. After that, now we're talking about third. Yeah, because he always did the tribe. second. He never, now he never was seven eights. Yeah, like and last that's all year he didn't. He made them all in his first attempt. Yeah, I think correct. That's why it was so electric. Correct. And that's Look, both things the, can be right. You can be right, and the judges sucked. Right? Can we agree on that? <laughs> no, I, I don't. I don't. I, don't, I mean, I just don't. Uh, <laughs> I just don't agree. I, I mean, I, th I think some of the scores, like I agree, Toppin should have been in in yeah. the finals. Yeah. Jalen Brown. And right. it was it was like he lost by a point something because of. So uh, I think you speaking the to great that Mr. Hillman factor. gave him a 46. Yeah, I think he yeah. I think he got caught up in we don't really know this guy, and he and I think the score showed that. Yeah, I think I think he was robbed. Vince and, and Mr. Hillman probably just Mr. listen. Hillman. Vince, I want to ask you. He gave you, him a 46. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Hillman oh, yeah. was tripping a little bit, and he just gave Jaime <laughs> Hawkins a better score of the where he pushed off. Who gave him a 47? As it say, and I think it was you know guidance more so than pushoff. I honestly think it was guidance more so than pushoff, but. 
it the, what you your eyes see is your arm there as you're going through. So I don't mm-hmm. I don't mean I don't I don't have any pushback. PC, I want to ask you like obviously we want Mac in the NBA. We want him to be playing. Yeah. If he happens to be in EuroLeague next year, let's say that, does the NBA bring him back for a three-peat, or now they're just opening up the floodgates for, for anybody to compete? So if you think about it, I, I, I saw that a couple of other people, analysts talk about it. A lot of these guys, you know, I, I said what I said to him for this reason leading to this question because a lot of these guys, like, um, for, for me, um, Levine, a lot of the guys we're not seeing in the dunk contest on, on, anymore doesn't want to get put in a box as a career dunker. Huh. Only knows as a dunker. You know, but, but for Mac, I wanted to say that to him to take advantage of this opportunity because, yes, he's playing in the G League. You know, they, they get featured every now and then on NBA TV. But right now, he's not getting the opportunity to showcase his talents on the big stage often. And he took advantage of it. He's taking advantage of it in the dunk contest. And he's also he also took advantage of in the Rising Stars game. So, like I said, until further notice, go for it. But you just don't want because every time you say, "Oh yeah, the, the Duncan kid, the kid That's that dunk, the kid that yeah. Got, yeah. yeah," you know, as opposed to showing that you're a player, because we all want to show we have game. And Ch- CP, you said it. He has some game to him. He does. But mm-hmm. you know, we'll never really consider him that until further notice. That's actually fair. By the way, uh, finalist for the Basketball Hall of Fame. Congrats, sir. Oh, yeah, Thank yeah. you, man. Uh, you're all grown up. What would it feel like hey, to be inducted? Let me tell you. Oh, what it would it feel like, I, man? I'm going to tell you what it felt like that that day. It's, it did <laughs> not. It did not feel real. So once uh, Matt Weiner called my name, I needed a second because he's like Vince Carter, and he's like, "Come up here," and I was like, <laughs> "I need a second to, to 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 make sure this is real." Because it's like you know, I've heard it from people like, "Oh, you're you're destined this that." I hear you, but. I, I need to hear it and to be a finalist. And when I stood up there and looked in the crowd at Tim Hardaway and all the other, you know, legends uh, who are already in, I'm like, bro, this is real. Like, this is something real. So it's I'm I'm honored. And what's this? The next stage coming up? Like, I, I just yeah. I, I, whenever it gets here, it gets here. Like, I'm living in the moment now. Um, because like I can say, you know, we talk about wanting to be the best version of ourselves in the NBA. And then once we're done, you see what happens, and, and wow, here we are. All right, so let's fast forward because you're getting in. Are you hiring a speechwriter? And if you do, are we going laughs, tears, petty? What are we doing? Well, bro, I, I, I'll be the first to tell you this. Like, I, since I've been out of the league and, and, and having kids and doing all that, soft, soft. So tears, <laughs> like, are, are guaranteed. Oh, man. Uh, I, I want to I, I just, I want it to come from the heart. And how I really feel about it, more so than writing in a, a writer. I be, I literally walked down the hallway once I got out of that thing. I got there's there's a couple of, hey, you know, I, I do some. I'm a writer and I do this. Oh, I was wow. like, you know, we'll be in touch. I was like, cool. Let's just wait till <laughs> we know for sure for one and for two. This is I want to tell my version. I want to tell my story, yeah. and I want to go about it my way because I I kind of went about it my way. You know, I, I had 22 years of great basketball. I had people say, why are you still playing? Why are, you know you I had people say, why are you you know, you're doing this because you're average and worried about that. Well, I want to tell my story and 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 give give it to you my way. Vince, I I'm, I may be showing my age here, but I had the the privilege of competing against you when you played for the New Jersey Nets, which was a legendary run, and obviously Toronto Raptors, where you began your career and everything, um, started to trans translate up for you. I gotta ask, what which jersey are you rocking? Hall of Fame, if you had to choose Toronto. one. Both legendary stops. Yeah. Toronto. Mm. Toronto. It, 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 I mean, it has to be. That's where it started. That's where it all, you know, to continue the, the rise. Yes, I had great years in Jersey, but it started there. And my confidence and, and, and understanding the player that I, I, I could be in the league was, was trending upwards still in Toronto. BC, you know, it's funny. When you were gone the day and I had the host, I introduced him as the Hall of Fame. And he's like, what? You know something? I know that's how I know. That's how I know you were nervous as hell. You were, and then I was like, fuck, did I say something wrong? <laughs> right, yeah. so I was like, wait, wait, what? I was like, you know something? Tell me. Yes, yeah. you sure did. Because you're a lock, bro, and you yeah, deserve it. Yeah, we happy for you. But out of your entire NBA career, your time at North Carolina, did you have a favorite year of basketball? Mm. Oh. Like any year oh, stick man. out? It's a lot. Honestly, I, I think hitting the ground running as a rookie was, you know, it, and just just making a splash. That was kind of one of the favorites. And then, you know, 
leading vote getter for the mm. first time was probably you know yeah, I mean it's 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 minor payment to everyone else because think about this Cole MJ uh, when I, well I got an MJ's last year but I was leading vote getter for like three years in a row with Cole hmm. you know uh, T Mac in his heights I mean AI Hey G guys so like at the like that's that's when like these are some of the best moments and you know we're talking about leading vote getter into an Oscar and we know what we know what the voting is it's just a popularity contest and they chose me man to be like the leading vote getter over those guys like that was some of the best times and obviously you know game winners and you know I, I played a long time man so it's a lot of <laughs> a lot. great moments <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and I play with some great teams and some great teammates but those are the things that stick out because you know sometimes when you talk about popularity you're always thinking of the you know a very small window of guys and I was uh, you know voted higher than some of those guys at that time. Yeah, that's dope. I tell everyone. I want to I want to get back to Duncan for a second, uh, VC, because a lot of people are saying there there are no more original dunks, which I which I disagree because I disagree. I, w- I was one of those people, and then I saw uh, Zach Levine, and then I saw Aaron Gordon, and then now I've seen Mac McClung. These guys are making up new dunks. I severely disagree. But do you think everything has been done, or hmm. do you believe no. that? I'm with you. I'm with you out there. I think you know there's no more dunks that we've seen in the NBA. But right. for those who don't watch, watch, you know, or look at the YouTube videos, like I, that's how I, that's how I saw Mac. I watched Mac when he was doing this thing in high school on YouTube. You know, that's a, you know coming across. Obviously, anything dunking that comes up on social media, I tend to get tagged on them and get my <laughs> thoughts. Or you know, if it's a a homage dunk or anything like that, so I tend to see them and you know I go to search. And so let me tell you, I, there's dunks out there that has not been done um, yeah. that I think will eventually translate or make its way into the NBA. Somebody like Mac. Mac is bringing dunks already that we haven't seen, or, you know, or done or thought of. So it's just, it's just, it's just in due time. But there, there's some dunks out there that you're like, yeah. whoa. Bro. I, like, I and think- we've all seen it. They just don't, people are afraid to try it. Yeah, I think the fans should stop focusing on new dunks and start thinking more of the performance, the, uh, the performance and value of it. The execution. Yeah. Gotta make some, yeah. Let's make some more dunks. I, I, there again, I think it's, you know, I think it's the approach. I think if you, you, you're not prepared or if you don't approach it the right way, kind of like a basketball game, you go out there and you get embarrassed. You know what I'm saying? So I, I think that's one of the things. And All-Star Weekend, you have fun. You, you heard some of the guys doing All-Star Weekend, which bothered me a little bit. But Too they said, you know, it's All-Star Weekend. I'm not going to I'm not going to take it seriously. I'm going to go Harvard's go. You know, it's All Star break. I'm on break. You know, I played in the uh, the All Star game in 2001. I think it was in um, in DC. One of the best All Star games. You talking about most competitive? We were down 21 with AI Mac uh, T Mac. That is um, Steph Marbury. Uh, who am I missing? Uh, somebody else. And I was playing the four. I was guarding C Webb and Duncan and KG. You know, it's like, and we were going hard. And and that's what it was. So I, I I think your approach, if it's in, if it's done the right way, you will give the fans a great show. That's all we want. There was a rumor, by the way, back in the day that the NBA tried to elevate the dunk contest. They were offering like a million dollar incentive or something. A, would that work now? And B, who were they trying to to pitch you against at the time? Do you remember? Yeah, uh, they, it was, it, that's, that is true. It was uh, Kobe, T Mac. Uh, LeBron, um, and that's the that's the that's the three others that I recall. You know, so if, yeah, but guys didn't want to do it. What? That would have been know, a we, dream I mean, dunk contest. What's context. crazy now, too, because guys are making so much money. Would a million dollars yeah. make a John ja Morant no, like but, do it? But but here's yeah, yeah, like but what what is what is guys making now? Do you, uh, do we know? Uh, that's the question I have because I think. You know, because of the inflation in salaries right. and even minimum salary, like I think for for the G League, and this is no disrespect, but like you put a hundred thousand dollars. I mean, even twenty five thousand. That's what I made. I made twenty five thousand in two thousand uh, when I when I won. Sounds okay, crazy. so <laughs> I hope to God that's not what it is now because of you know what these guys are making. But I, I think you if you put like we saw. Five hundred thousand for the in season tournament to the winner and right. two fifty to second place. What what do we get out of that? Guys going hard. Yeah. So I, I just think if you put somewhere but from two to two fifty, obviously they say a million, it's just hard for me right now to say give a million to a dunker, but you're gonna give you're not gonna give a million to each player for playing in a basketball game. Okay, but somewhere in in, in between, it has to be six figures. 
And I, I, yeah. I think now that that's that's good money for guys to go out there and play for. Yeah. I mean, Jaw did have that quote. Was it last year, or the year before? Where he's like, "Give me a million bucks, and I'll do the slam dunk <laughs> contest." So he is on record as having a price. Let's and I heard that. I heard that he's considering. Um, well, I heard next year, but he's considering. I also think Mac now being such a household dunking name doesn't that does that motivate guys like Jaw or Zion people like that to come and like knock him off, or they no. don't really care. I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think so because of the uh, uh, what the, they're afraid. But if they if they don't beat him, guess what? People will say, "Oh, you lost to the G League guy." Right. Exactly. And, and they're worried about that. And see, that's why I loved about Jalen Brown. And it's kind of hard. You know, he did what he had to do, but he he said it in his interview. He was not afraid to go out there yeah. and fail. Yeah, you I'm know? not knocking. But, what oh. I think is a separation yeah. so too. I, I loved it. Yeah. I won't knock Jalen. I think Brown he's done. It. I think he's done a tremendous job of labeling himself as a high level dunker. So I think once you get in that competition, whatever wherever he's going after that, we judge him for that. But in the dunk contest, he's the man. Um, okay, I, 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 my rebuttal to that is. Being a high-level dunker, you know, the one thing he said in his interviews, like, hey, you know, I dunked on a lot of guys. You know, I think I'm one of the best at dunking on guys. Okay, that's in-game. In-game. Yeah. As we see, that doesn't translate to dunk contests in your imagination and having to go out there and wowing people. Like, it's totally yeah. different. It's true. We're taking a quick break. Are we saying goodbye to Vince? What a oh, you'll, you know what? You'll be back. That's the good news. Oh. So we'll say goodbye to Vince today, but we will be back to wrap things up here on Run It Back. Thanks, BC. Always. Run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it up, run it back, 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 run it up. Get in on all the NBA buzzer beater, ankle breakers, and tomahawk jams with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get 150 in bonus bets, guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. The app is easy to use, and there are so many different ways to bet, like live single game parlays, find bets in the new Explore tab, make a parlay in the Parlay Hub, the best way to find parlay, popular parlays and more. So download the app and make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, the official partner of the NBA. Uh, we got a funny tweet here. The, the only way to fix the All-Star game is to leak losing teams Instagram DMs. Dan's yeah. a loser. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, we don't care. Dan, yeah. How does if, this fix basketball, Dan? You just want to know who's doing what. If we're shooting our shot in the DMs, we have no shame yeah, in man, the first Don't worry place. about that. We're okay. Don't worry about that, Dan. By the way, man. I wanted to show because here it is. We have Lou Will High School Dunk Contest here. That, I swear to God, is better ah, you see than that. the dunk contest that we just saw. That one was okay. I'm this is how long LeBron's been great. I'm wearing LeBron's in this, and I'm in high school. This one right here? Look at this. <laughs> Look. I had it, bro. That's a 50. I had it. That's a, that's a for sure 50. This year, that's a 50. I, I won sure. this dunk contest, by the way. Where was this dunk contest? Uh, city of City of Palms. Yeah, down in Bishop Bro. Yeah, who'd you beat? Um, I for, I forget, but I did win, and my team didn't do great. We were number two in the country. We had a camera crew following us around, and uh, we should have should have. Did you guys win the tournament? <laughs> no, we lost. The, we lost the very first game. I played in the tournament, and I think I did the dunk. I'm not a I'm not a trickster dunker. I, I could like I got some bodies. But I don't like. I don't have. So I don't you're have. Like, your in-game dunker. Like Vince was just talking about. There's a difference. Like I can't. I don't know how to go and perform a dunk contest, but I can catch a body in a game. Well, it's all good. Great show today, my brother. We'll be back tomorrow. Kenny Beecham, friend of the show, will be joining us. Thank you guys for joining. Run it back. See you tomorrow On morning. Hopefully it's not dual raining. TV. It takes an hour and a half to get here. <laughs> Run it back, run it up, 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 and run it back, run it back, run it up.